the blessed Muhammad and his holy household. My name is Abdul Malik and I'd like to welcome you all to join me on this journey as we go back to the books to figure out what really happened during and after the Prophet's life. Peace and blessings be upon him and his family. Stay away from the Shia. How many times have you heard this statement? Don't go near them, don't talk to them, and certainly do not discuss religion with them, for they will only confuse and misguide you. What a shame. And what an embarrassment for those who say such words. In fact, what a self-defeating statement. How clearly have they expressed their fear of the Shia. Today, I speak not to those who make such claims, but to those who have heard such claims and have allowed it to dictate and restrict their search for knowledge. I want you to pay attention to the situation you are in. You initially entered into this world oblivious to its history, oblivious to the schemes and plots of mankind against the truth. So it is necessary you pay attention to what Allah has presented you with. The truth always shines over falsehood for those who are sincere. There's something very crucial I'd like to point out to you. Have you noticed how your scholars are always so overconfident when dealing with other religions? Christianity, Judaism, Zoroastrianism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Atheism. They are ready to go head to head with all of them. Do you ever hear them warning you to stay away from the atheists, for example, or stay away from the Christians? Never. So why is this? Because these groups with their false beliefs hold no threat to them. How clear the truth is from the falsehood. But the Shia, what is all this about? Had they been firm on the truth, it would have been of benefit for them to tell their people to propagate their religion en masse to the Shia, just like they do with Christians and atheists. You would have seen them organize massive crowds for large public debates, just like they do with the Christians and atheists. But never would they do such a thing because they recognize the benefit for such a situation would be for the Shia themselves. Instead, they raise their voices, screaming and shouting, telling people to stay away from the Shia, instigating campaign after campaign to kill and silence the Shia. If the voice of the Shia had been falsehood, then believe me, they would not have wasted their time playing these games of propaganda and waging their campaigns of violence. They would have taken the Shia to the intellectual battlegrounds of debate and discussion, but instead they instill fear into people's hearts, manipulating them to believe that if they spend even a single day reading about or talking to the Shia, they would somehow be sucked into a black hole and never escape. It truly is an embarrassment. Since when has seeking knowledge been limited? Can one really gain true knowledge and reach certainty? unless all sides have been investigated? How can one know if their sect is indeed the saved sect without considering the others? They wish for you to blindly follow. When we Muslims are not blind followers, liberate yourselves from this trap. For Allah has created us free. To reach Allah, one must liberate himself from the traps of man and be obedient to Allah alone. And Allah has certainly commanded us to seek knowledge. If someone is preventing you from seeking knowledge, then understand that he is hindering the very freedom that Allah has granted you.